Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Over the last couple episodes, we've been gradually whittling down the number of religions that can be justified using logic. So far, we know that the most accurate religion is one of the Christian religions which doesn't acknowledge the others as equals and doesn't believe that the Bible is the only legitimate source of truth. It also needs a clear, verifiable connection to its founder, Jesus Christ. Only three Christian religious types seem to fit this bill. The Roman Catholic Church, the Orthodox Churches, of which there are several, and Anglicanism. The Roman Catholic Church has a long, well-documented history, dating back to the days of the Apostles themselves. It claims to be absolutely supreme among churches, and its claim is based on several factors, but the most obvious one is the primacy of Peter among the Apostles. St. Peter was appointed the leader of the Church of Jesus, a scene which is well documented in every translation of the Bible, and he proceeded to go to Rome, becoming the head of the church in Rome, where he was crucified upside down. The Roman Catholic Church sees Peter's position as that of the first bishop of Rome, and ever since then considers the office of the bishop of Rome to be a supernatural office, protected by God, and protecting those who hold it from ever teaching error in matters of faith and morals. The history of the Orthodox churches is a bit harder to pin down, because for most of recorded history, there was no substantial difference between the Roman Catholics and the Orthodox. There was only one church, which existed in both the West and the East. The Western Church came to be known as the Roman Catholic Church in later years, while the Eastern Churches came to be known as the Orthodox Churches, denoted by various nationalities, such as Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Celtic Orthodox, and so forth. The biggest notable difference between the churches of the East and West was in their relationship to the governments of the nations they grew up in. The Roman Catholic Church, claiming to serve God's will on earth, naturally supposed that it should have authority over the governments of Europe, where it had the strongest presence, and for much of human history, it did. The church, as a rule, didn't go around deposing kings or barons, but neither did kings or barons have the authority to appoint bishops or popes. In the East, the remnants of the Roman Empire were still continuing, and for the most part, patriarchs were appointed by or strongly influenced by the emperor. This was seen as a form of obedience to God, to honor the men who he placed in authority on earth. The core beliefs on both sides of the church were virtually identical, but that didn't mean they had to like each other. The bishops in the West saw the East as disobedient and decadent, to say nothing of being wrong for letting the emperor have so much influence over the church, while the East saw the West as arrogant and unfairly independent of government rule. Tensions, as you might imagine, ran high. At last, in 1054, it all came to a head. The Patriarch of Constantinople and a representative of the Pope both attempted to kick each other out of the church, leading to a break in the church. Though this misunderstanding has since been corrected, and both of the decrees were declared invalid, the break remains. Anglicanism is a much more recent arrival. In the time just slightly after the splintering, in 1517, a king named Henry VIII wanted a divorce, and he was willing to do whatever it took to get it. In the end, he approached the bishops of the church in England and said, Make me the head of the church, or I'll take away all your property. All except one of them agreed. A bishop named John Fisher refused to give in to Henry's demands, and was beheaded for it a short time later. Not long after that, a huge persecution began in England, in which many more Catholics were executed for their faith. And that, basically, was how the Anglican Church began. The problem with Anglicanism is this. It's not possible for anyone to be the head of a Roman Catholic Church unless they're ordained to the priesthood. King Henry wasn't even a priest, so he couldn't possibly be a bishop or the head of the church. Even during the worst times in the East, Caesar never tried to claim that he himself was the patriarch. This is the reason why both Catholics and Orthodox alike acknowledge that Anglicanism is not fully part of the Church. They have ceremonies and representatives, but their priesthood can't possibly be valid, because the head of that priesthood for quite some time wasn't even a priest. However, there's one more problem which threatens to lay down one last dividing line between religions. One last issue we need to discuss. The issue of teaching God's will. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.